All right. I don't know what day it is today. January 20, what is it? January something. 27th. 27th, January 27th. We've got to fly this evening. And uh, we just did a big tour. Sarah fell in love with some elephants again. <laughs> Should be on the video. So I'm gonna put our, uh, our adventure today. will be on the, this video to watch while we hear these voices. Now let's get right into it. This is titled, Could This Be Why? Hello, Steve. I'm responding to the person who did four tours in Iraq and said those experiences of combat don't compare to the fear they felt when encountering a sabe. They stated that they won't go back into the forest without being armed and in the company of another. You ask why this common? Why was this common among those who have experienced both war and sabe? I have contemplated this after each similar experience was shared on your channel. I believe it is the fear of the unknown. As soldiers, you are trained. You know the enemy, who they are, what they believe, what they value, what weapons they use, and how they fight. You know the enemy, who they are, what they believe, what they value, what weapons they use, and how they fight. Soldiers also are drilled to know their outfits, weapons, and what to expect from them. There is none of that when encountering an unfamiliar creature, especially one as intimidating in stature and with unknown or unfamiliar abilities. It is a very unpredictable encounter. You don't know what their intent, their strengths and weaknesses, or their habits. Who knows what they consider a threat or, will, what, or what will provoke them, or how many there are. This, I believe, could be the reason for the level of fear some experience. I know others will share their thoughts and insights on the question. Thank you for the challenge for all you share and for all who share their stories. Been thumbs upping since March 2020. Never gets old for the curious. God bless all, LJ. Hey, LJ, thanks for that, man. It's good to see somebody's thinking, right? Keep thinking. Keep figuring out these puzzle pieces. And uh, I believe what you say, well, obviously, obviously I'm not going to say obviously, but what you say is definitely going to be factors for sure. And, you know, before I even started talking openly, openly about this online, I used to always talk to my friends and pe people who were curious, and they'd say, well, why is it so scary? And at first, my thoughts are, it's because our childhood classic monster is alive, standing there looking at us. The, the, the shape and the description we've been taught since we were little kids, which is a classic monster, right? And all the monster books, magazines, comics, um, sci-fi TV shows, especially comics, it's usually a huge, upright being. I think even Bugs Bunny had a, had a being like that with no neck, wide, covered in hair. And terrifying with bulging muscles right that's always been our typical monster description growing up so i think that as well possibly has something to do with it it's ingrained into us since childhood as we learn that that is the description of an absolute terrifying monster so it's something else i thought at the time to all of a sudden be an adult standing in the forest and there is our classic childhood descriptive monster is alive staring at us right but now the more I learn here, I think there's a lot more to the, to the just that. <laughs> I think this, the whole ball of wax is a lot more than we realize. I have a funny feeling. And anyway, appreciate that email, man. And I hope, I hope somebody else is going to chime in and, and drop what they feel as well. Because I just have a hard time picturing our kick-ass, fearless um, armed forces personnel, law enforcement personnel who have been trained and trained and trained and trained and looked down the barrels of guns, been shot at, been bombed from the air, all the above, and they still surge forward to win. And and they come home and, and see one and simply just see one of these things without being shot at, without being attacked, and the terror goes right through their freaking soul. It's it's something I think is a lot larger than we actually know how to wrap our beans around i think but anyway somebody else wants to chime in on that email away thanks for sending that in all right dog man in temple texas hi steve hope you're doing well today and i'm a big fan of yours now when you ask why my hero when they ask who my heroes are it's you john wayne and president trump <laughs> no shit well anybody who emails in here with their honest stories is definitely a hero here we go. A good friend of mine who is from the same neighborhood as me told me 
an encounter with a dogman around March of this year at exactly 5 a.m. and no more than 60 feet away. It was around 9 feet tall and had a head of a canine, and his tongue was hanging out and the tongue was long. It had claws and ran on two legs, and it was chasing a small deer. He saw the beast for a good two minutes. He was getting off work and was not drinking. Thank you so much, Ray. Short and sweet to the point. Chasing a small deer. Two minutes is a frickin' long time. If you watch that thing chasing a deer for two minutes, he must have been in the prairies, right? You should get him to uh, possibly email us in and, and throw down his story. I'm sure some people that lives around there would want to hear about it. Here's another one. This is titled, Ignorance is Bliss. Listening today, January 11th, 23, you sparked a thought that I'll get to after my story. First, thank you for this platform and all you do. This happened in May of 1990. We just moved into a house that I had been restoring for about five years. It was about 11.30 p.m. and we were getting ready for bed when we heard from our second floor bathroom an extremely low, unbelievably loud 15 second roar slash scream. It vibrated my chest. My wife and I both looked at each other and said, what the hell was that? For some reason, it didn't strike fear in us. I grabbed my super powerful flashlight and went outside through a side door, shining the light around. We spotted something we couldn't believe. No, not a sabbat, but a raccoon. It was looking up into a hollow of an old oak tree with two other raccoons staring down at him. We looked at each other and laughed. Remember, I said, ignorance is bliss. I never knew a raccoon could roar like that, and no, they can't. We shrugged it off and went to bed. The next summer, sometime in July, I kept noticing my motion lights going off in front of my shop. Being curious, I decided to walk the 100 feet to my shop and see what was setting them off, thinking it must be an animal. It had just rained and the grass was so wet, I decided to walk down the road to my lower driveway. Again, I took a flashlight because it was so dark, no moon, about 11 p.m. I got to within 30 feet of the shop when I heard this awful, low, deep growl. Something, oh sorry, stopped me in my tracks. I couldn't see anything. But then I heard it getting closer and louder. Well, I could run the 440 yard dash in 4.4 seconds, but that night I think I did it in about three seconds flat. Those are my two encounters. The only thing is, at this time, I had no thoughts about Sabe, so they went out of my mind until I found your channel. Now on to the next thought. I just listened to your talking about how our staring at them causes some kind of negative reaction to them. Also, you have compared their mentality as being sort of autistic. My ying, these two thoughts together, is because my grandson has autism and he will never look you straight in the eye. He's very uncomfortable. If someone looks him directly in his eyes, could there be a similar factor there? I hope this isn't too long, but I have to get one more thought out. I've been listening for over two years, and I put together a thought that I haven't heard anyone else directly address. That is, our reactions to seeing these beings. It is very evident that our attitudes slash reactions are affecting our experiences. I've noted that if the person seeing the Sabe has a calm, almost impossible reaction that the result doesn't seem to be very traumatic but is a person has how can we say ballistic negative frightened reaction then they came then they can end up with extreme ptsd those that those that force themselves to try to communicate quietly with these beings seem to have almost a rewarding experience i hope some of this does someone some good keep up the great work we all need God bless, and have a great day, life. Use my name if you like, Tom Thornton from Connecticut, and have a camp in Northwest PA, where you just read a story from Warren, PA, only a couple miles from my backyard. All right. <clears throat> and another, another person emails in that is thinking and trying to figure it out. I love that. I love that. You're helping people think, my man including myself. Thanks for sending that in. Thanks for sending that in. It's funny, all people react differently to traumatic traumatic uh, experiences in life. We're all made so differently that way. I don't know what makes some of us braver than others. I haven't a clue. 
but I've observed all the different flavors numerous times myself. It is interesting watching human beings. All right, now listen to this. This is titled Choctaw Name for Bigfoot. After I wrote you my first story, I returned to the elders and spoke to them. I also apologized to them for being dumb and not remembering the name for Bigfoot. A female elder told me the name again, and I will remember it. It is Shampe, spell S-H-A-M-P-E, pronounced Sambe. Sambe sounds awfully familiar to those. Sorry. Sounds awfully familiar and close to Sabe to me. Just food for thought. Oklahoma dude. So it is pronounced bracket S-A-M-B-E. Samb, Sambe, Samba. <laughs> it's not really much of a punctuation description for me, which I normally need anyway, because I'm such a dumbass when it comes to pronouncing a lot of shit. That's interesting to me, though. Thanks for sending that in. And it is very, very similar, isn't it? All right, here we go. This is titled Possible Encounter. Hello, Stephen. It's Jacob. You can use my name. I was hunting on Gravel Mountain near Grand Lake, Colorado. We were early season archery elk. It was my father, uncle, and I. We set ourselves up in a triangle around 120 yards from each other with my uncle down toward the river beneath us and my father and I up a higher calling. Up in higher calling. Towards dusk, my father and I heard a black bear above us and neither of us could sight it, only hear it above us. That's when it happened. All of a sudden, for myself, I heard a squeal of an injured small predator. However, it went dead silent before it happened. It was the only one, I was the only one that heard this squeal, even though we were all within 200 yards. I'm convinced that after hearing and listening to your channel for about four years, that it wasn't one of our normal predators here. It was the one time that I had forgotten to bring any sort of contact other than our calls to communicate. I'd also heard a call at roughly 1 a.m. that sounded like a perfect elk bugle that we all are convinced is not an animal. However, at the time, there were no other hunters there yet. We set up two days before the season to scout for waterways and possibly some grouse. I had that squeal on the last day we were there, and that was one week after the season opened due to other bow hunters and the start of muzzleloader season. I was 16 when I had this encounter and got very interested in the subject once he started talking about these beings. I've been sitting on this info for about two years now and have been pondering to return to the same river to hunt again. Hope everything's going well and I'm very thankful you've created an outlet for those who have had experiences, Jacob. Okay, thanks, man. That, uh, interesting you said you heard a black bear. What did, what did that sound like? You know, like I've heard, I've heard black bears in the past, not too often, so if you heard the black bear, I'm guessing it was a vocal sound right because if you just heard some branches or leaves you can't really say it was a black bear right sounds interesting man make sure you email me back with anything else you experience all right because i want to hear about it be safe all right this next one's titled experiences going on in connecticut excuse me in connecticut 2022 Hi, Steve. I want to start off by saying thank you for being the voice of the people and such a badass and good-hearted, honest, good-hearted, honest man. Thank you for the kind words. In the last year and a half that I've been watching your channel, you have become someone I can look up to and will have no problem saying I would gladly protect and stand up with you and the people against the evil tyrants that are currently in, ru in ruining our government. My name is John M., and I've been living in Connecticut for over 15 years. I'm a 22-year-old kind, yet strong-hearted guy that loves being in the outdoors and an avid fisherman. The reason why I say I can look up to you, Steve, is because I, too, have had to stand up against evil men growing up. These were the same people that my mom would bring into, bring into our lives and call her boyfriend. Ever since I was no more than seven years old, I would have to go through the daily verbal and physical abuse they would do on my mom younger siblings and myself until I was around 14 and decided I was no longer going to remain silent and watch these evil men take everything from us. Enough of the sad stuff. Now time to tell you how my life has been changed since being slapped in the face by the facts. Sorry to hear of those experiences, man. And I hope uh, you righted a lot of those wrongs. 
But anyway, we won't get on that topic. I'm sure we could talk about it for quite a while. I'm going out to fish in a somewhat secluded reservoir in the woods for over nine years with my cousin, who's 42 years old and has been in the military. Over the past few years, we would always hear branches breaking and what seemed like something was trying to walk quietly through the woods. We would always brush this off as some deer or bear walking around the place and never put too much thought to it. It, wasn't, it hasn't been since 2021 where the encounters have really started picking up and getting more noticeable. I would hear the occasional tree knock and would always ask my cousin, did you hear that? To which he would always respond with, no, or maybe it was just the wind moving the trees. But deep down, my gut told me it was something else. One day early of early summer 2021, we went out fishing during a rainstorm and were disturbed by a sudden loud noise coming from across the reservoir. And when we looked up, we saw a massive splash coming from the water surface that my guess reached up to about six feet high. The only thing I could explain that did this was a massive rock that was thrown in from some distance since we saw no living creature or person around the area and no it wasn't a fish. We know it's in those in that water and the last time I checked I've never seen a largemouth bass even make a splash that dense or tall. My cousin has shared with me that in the past years he had gone to the same spot with a close friend of his where they saw a strange large bird-like creature that was pale no feathers grayish skin and had a massive wingspan fly across the lake at a speed that he had never seen a bird travel and that scared them so bad it made them call the fishing trip short no doubt he has also told me that deep in the woods next to that reservoir there is a tree that he says is unlike any other tree in the area saying that it had weird branches, no leaves ever grew on it, and had other smaller trees growing very close next to it. His friend was oddly very interested in it. My cousin said he touched this tree and felt a very strange and bad vibe, and has never gone near this tree ever again. Maybe I can convince him and see if I can take a picture. Update, he recorded a video of it. Now, 2022 has been some of the most gut twisting experiences yet which I think it might have started because I began to say in my mind my name the reason why I'm in the woods and that I respect them and mean no harm before entering the woods early summer 2022 me and my cousin went to the reservoir and went in our went to our usual first spot in the back cove we heard a branch sorry we heard a bunch of branches break behind us in a loud fashion almost as if whatever it was decided to crouch or lay down on a pile of branches. We decided to leave that area and go to the next spot. After about 15 minutes into our second spot, he decided to move to the, the honey hole, which was about a 20 minute hike. And I told him I'll meet up with him after a few casts. Not even three minutes after he left, I heard what sounded like a woman screaming at the top of her lungs getting murdered. It lasted for around two seconds before it faded then I began to hear what seemed like two men having a conversation at a distance. When this happened, the woods turned completely silent. And I mean, the birds, bugs, hell, even the wind and sounds of water crashing into the shore disappeared. I know the woods get quiet when a predator is in the area, but never to that extent. I said to myself, no way two guys are going to scare me away from enjoying my time outdoors until my common sense told me, to not ignore the silence in the woods. All I had was a foldable, po foldable pocket knife, and I was not about to become a missing 411 case. I started to hike out when I heard what sounded like weird talking at a distance like a different language, almost like gibberish. I thought to myself, no freaking way. I know what that is. I know what is making that noise. And I started to walk at a slightly faster pace towards the honey hole. As I walked, the gibberish voice kept coming closer and louder until it seemed like I was being surrounded by the voice and it was right behind me. At this moment, I thought in my head, I'm going to stop mid-stride, turn around and catch this savvy by surprise and get a laugh out of his shocked face that I caught him red-handed. Instead, when I turned around, the voice went completely silent, not a single sound. 
And now, I was the one with the shocked face. I scanned around the area and saw nothing, so I started to walk again, continuously hearing the voice keeping its distance. I got to my cousin and told him to watch his six. I heard strange voices and he noticed how uncomfortable I looked. While we fished, I would hear them one more time and coming from the forest edge and I was in the lo- I was in the water in my waders and asked if he heard them, which he obviously said no. Steve, I've tried to ask myself, why did it do that? Was it trying to speak to me? And I was just too nervous and dumb at the time to understand him and get the mind speak. Ever since then, I've had a strong feeling that I've been tagged and have the hitchhiker effect. Whenever I come near a piece of woods, the area goes completely silent and branches begin to break and sometimes we'll even hear noises that I've never heard before. I've also had experiences in my own apartment where I would be up late at night, gaming with my window open and headset on and hear things climbing up and down the trees next to my apartment or tree branches being violently shaken. I say in my head, I know you're there, I mean no harm, but please do not try and scare me for fun or bother my life. I can't stop from looking at the edge of any woods I pass trying to see if I catch a glimpse of this thing. I get goosebumps and my hairs on my neck raise whenever I think or talk about this. We have been to that same spot to fish, and on our first time night fishing I caught my personal best six pound bass, and shortly after a red glowing orb emerged from the trees across the lake and hovered and moved in a weird formation above the tree line until we decided to call it a night. I've worked with all the high-tech drones currently in the market, and this was no drone. The encounter of August 19, 2022 at 8.30 p.m. that finally made my cousin a believer. We were night fishing again and decided to call it a night since the bite was no good and I was feeling a bit off. It was pitch black in the woods and we had to use our phones as a flashlight to our 30-minute hike back to the car. Halfway through the hike, my cousin says he begins to hear a low buzz slash vibration and then three heavy thuds as if something fell from the trees. Maybe he heard a portal opening and something came out? He asked if I heard that and he got disturbed that I had also heard it but but only the three thuds, not the vibration. We started to walk at a faster pace and talked out loud to let whatever it was know of our position and not accidentally run into it. He thought it may have been a deer that was sleeping and got startled, but quickly ruled it off because it would have made way more noise with all the leaves in the ground. A few minutes go by and we made it out of the forest, walked towards his car, which is about 15 yards away from the wood line, and was the only car in the parking lot. As soon as we started, as soon as we started taking off our waders to put into the trunk, we began to hear branches breaking and rustling high up in the tree on the wood line on the tree closest to us. We only took a quick glance and saw nothing and decided to brush it off as an owl. No more than te- 10 seconds later, we heard something massive get thrown slash fall from the top of that same tree and it landed right below it. We both dropped what we were doing, looked up in shock, and saw that the same tree had leaves falling down while there was no wind or any other tree doing the same. I then said out loud, I know you're there. and respect you, we are now leaving. We're not bothering you, so stop bothering us. Now you have this strong ex-military guy, that's my cousin, eyes wide open, telling me he felt uneasy with hairs on edge and to hurry the hell up. He seemed to have listened to me and did not make any more noise. He was the first one to get in the car, and as I finished putting the last fishing pole in the trunk, the branch up top started breaking again, and I rushed into the passenger seat. Before he left the edge of the woods, he rolled down the window and turned down the music he was playing to calm himself down. He watched into the darkness for a good minute to see if we could catch a glimpse of something. He then says, Did you hear that? in which I did not, and he turns around and says, Holy shit! I just heard the tree knock that you always mention. I'm sorry for not believing you. You can clearly hear that it's a knock on wood 100%. After this experience, I've sent him multiple videos from Scott Carpenter, David Plytus, and you, Steve. He has been blown away by the facts and the hard truth, and he is definitely a believer in all the things out there now. He was shocked to think of Sabe because it was up on a tree and didn't expect them to be in the area where we go fishing since it's not remote. 
He has even began saying, in a joking manner, that he will have to stop bringing me fishing because it seems that they are interested in me and he's getting too old to have one of these things run, him, run up on him. I've been constantly thinking that maybe he was curious since it didn't seem to scare us off or was angry, but what if they began to get closer to me, like what happened to the Owl Man? I'm not sure if I feel comfortable knowing that their enemies will become mine, or let alone the fact that if this thing isn't a sabe and instead some other strange creature, we don't go out fishing much only on the weekend since we're always busy working together at a factory, so we might go back to the same spot one of these weekends. I'm sure of it. I get anxious whenever I think of the fact that I never went into the woods to look for this thing, yet it is still deciding to let us know of its presence, but I know that it was not going to stop me from enjoying nature. Good for you, man. P.S. I'm currently planning on completing a firearms training course in order to get all the permits necessary to get into hunting. I have no relatives or friends that I have that have hunted before or have any knowledge, so this would be a new experience for me. I'd love to get closer with nature and begin to harvest my own food and not the mystery food that the government feeds us. You know, one day I get the chance to hunt big game and experience the great nature up north in the Yukon or BC. Until then, I have much learning, training, and time that has to be put to become somewhat of a good hunter or even have the privilege to stand near you. <laughs> well, <clears throat> update. It's been three weeks since that encounter, and I've had two more experiences that makes the idea of me being tagged even more possible. Number one, me and my cousin went on our break at work at the back parking lot next to the woods, sitting on some chairs, smoking a joint, then started hearing knocks in the woods next to us in a very fast, repetitive motion. This went on for 10 seconds, until the other co-workers decided to walk to our area, and that's when it decided to stop knocking, which no one else heard but us. Number two, it was September 1, 11.20 p.m. I'd just gotten out of the hospital with my girlfriend, and it was only a few more minutes until it was her birthday. She recently received a very serious issue in her stomach, and we have been having to wait eight-plus hours in hospitals every other day. This night, she was very upset at how long we had been in the hospital and decided we should go somewhere quiet and get our mind off of it. We drove to a church in a dead end with a small wood surrounding it, near her home. Now this is a community with plenty of houses around besides that dead end. We had parked the car in front of the church and were talking, laughing and enjoying the breeze of the night. Seven minutes had passed when I was interrupted speaking by five very loud tree knocks in these small woods. Now I say small woods because there was a house on the other side of the woods with the back porch light on that you could clearly see through the trees. I looked at the direction of the knocking and saw what seemed like that back porch light off this house moving. The best I can describe it, it was as if someone were constantly swinging back and forth in front of the light. I pointed this out to my girlfriend and she yelled out, hell no, I'm out of here. I immediately turned the car around. Before she drove off, I told her to stop for a moment as I stared intensely into the woods. I heard nothing, only complete silence and an eerie feeling. My, cousins has entered, my cousin has entered into our fishing spot alone twice ever since then. Early in the morning with heavy mist in the forest, I told him that that's a big no-no. And he has heard something very loud, either near or across the lake, moving from the top of the tree to the top of another tree. He's told me multiple times that the best way he can describe the noises in the tree is that is that of a gorilla or a big monkey moving from tree to tree. There are no BS kind of people that don't have the time to make a story for you. Sorry. We are no BS kind of people that don't have the time to make a story for attention. Hell, every hair on my body raises just right in my counters or proofreading this letter. And that never happens writing these things down. And I would jokingly tell my cousin, so much for thinking it's only after me. Looking like you have a new friend yourself as well. Another quick update, as of October 5th, 2022, I was not going to include it, but since I had heard it in a recent email from the Arizona 4, I will include it. Ever since these experiences, I have also had nights where I fall asleep and it feels like I am still awake. A weird dark shadow in my room that would stay in a corner or feel like would hover over me while asleep. 
had pieces of my clothes tugged on, and I would always vividly remember commanding it in the name of Jesus to leave me and my house alone, to which you would not listen, and even waking up repeating that phrase. I usually don't sleep face up, but on these occasions I end up like that, and not even remembering falling asleep. This has only happened twice, but I refuse to sleep face up now, and sometimes while laying on my side I would get goosebumps and feel a presence enter my room, but I refuse to turn around and look. I said to tell my cousin this, and he has told me that he has had the, that happen to him for years. Oh, this is creepy. Very intense in the beginning years where he got a priest to come over to his house and cleanse it. But has, begin, but has begun to happen again ever since that dreaded night with the branches breaking. I'm so glad that I heard an email that explained what has happened to us. And yes, my cousin has also heard the voices in the woods last weekend that I heard this summer. He does not know how to explain it, describe the same things I had like a native language or gibberish, and does not like to really talk about the voices much now. No shit. As of January 11, 23, I've told two of my best friends about my savvy encounter. One of them cut off ties with me completely since. He did not believe in them, and the other said flat out, I believe you, even though I have not had an experience. Too many people have talked about these beings to know what that this is true. I've also shared the rumble video you shared called Died Suddenly with a friend and my cousin. That friend immediately got defensive and started going crazy about how I am a, how I am a conspiracy theorist. So I just cut him off. And my cousin watched it and said it completely changed his views. He told me he was sorry for pushing me into getting the injection, that he regretted the decision he made of getting the injection and the boosters for himself, wife and daughter. He said that he will no longer get any more of them and put himself and family in danger. In his own words, I knew not to trust mainstream media since I was in the army, but I am disturbed at what I saw in that movie and disgusted on how the government has lied to all of us. I'm sorry for making this so long, Steve, but I tried to get everything into one email. I've been sitting on the wall deciding if or when I should send it, and have decided to grow a pair and finally take that leap after hearing a few encounters that have been sent in from Connecticut. Thank you for all, thank you for that full BCL cunt and tips. Guilty to say that I've been that I've watched it more than a few times now. LOL. I will include the video of the weird tree and will include a picture of where the reservoir is located, but the picture is only for your eyes, Steve. Hey Johnny, here's the tree that I'm telling you about. Look at it. It's got like boobs and everything. Now if you look at it, there's no other tree around here that has all those bumps like that. Not even that one. But that one's mad lumpy. You see? Still standing. I also got a video while I was on my break at my job of weird screams from multiple voices that came from one direction and then began to surround me. And what do you know? Only I heard it while well, there was another employee in the same parking lot who didn't hear a thing. The audio is weird but has some wind in the background so I will not include it. But let me know if you'd like that video. But I personally just said whatever. It is what it is because it could be Many things, but family members I've shown the audio can't make out what it came from. Much love, blessings, and prayers to you and the HTH family. Sincerely, John M. That wasn't too long, John. I could have kept reading and reading and reading, all right? Um, I don't see the video on my notes here, so I'm going to have to try to find you in my inbox to find the video and the picture, and I will. And uh, what was I going to say on this? Um, you're when you went on to that last topic. Um, I haven't said who I've listened to when I have time, but lately I've had a lot of time for Dan Bongino. Bongino? On Rumble. All right, the Dan Bongino show, and I believe that he also has created a pay platform that is better than PayPal and all the other ones. So I'm going to look into that too. But Dan Bongino, you want to listen to him recently, all right? He's got a lot to say about that last topic. He has also mentioned that he, unfortunately, he admits it out of fear, accepted the forced item into his arm, and he absolutely regrets it, and he says that he hasn't felt the same since, and he's 
frankly quite scared for his health. But he has a lot of valuable information he shares in his Rumble, Rumble channel, and I got no problem suggesting him if you have time to listen. All right. Now, being tagged, things coming in your room. I don't know what's going on there, man. But I know that it happens quite often to a lot of people. And I do recall that interview of that man, I think in the southern U.S., that was researching Sasquatch Bigfoot for a long time. And then he finally had some kind of an absolute demonic type experience where something pinned him in a chair and told him that we are prey. They are hunters. And they like top prey or some damn thing, almost like we're trophies. And it absolutely messed him up, and he's not the same person today. Now, do I think that is Sasquatch? Do I? My, myself? No, I don't. Yeah, whatever happened to that guy, um, he's, the red flag for me is as soon as something or some voice or something like whatever says that, quote, we hunt humans as trophies, end quote. Well, being a professional hunter, um, and uh, many of you people there probably agree, humans are about the easiest thing to harvest if you, if that was the type of prey you prefer to go after, right? Humans have no sense of smell, most humans have no sense at all, right? The easiest things to hunt be a human being compared to your typical wild game on the planet. Just, I'm not, I'm not saying that as I'm some kind of a psycho human killer, which I'm not, but if I'm picturing coming to this planet, as a trophy hunter, it's definitely not going to be humans for the challenge, right? It'd be something like, it would be an extreme, crazy, bizarre challenge. It'd be something like, I don't know, go into the mountains of Himalayas and go after a snow leopard. Let's see how you make out trying to find one of those suckers on your own getting here. You know what I mean? Or else go into thick, dense forest one-on-one -on -one and see if you could actually get yourself on a wolf or a wolf or something that would be absolutely nearly impossible to get near just with your own senses, without hunting dogs or something, right, or else, but a thermal or whatever those psychopathic aliens might use, you know what I mean? So I have a funny feeling that whatever it was that assaulted that guy's mind was doing everything it could just to be an evil, filthy prick to that individual, is what I think. But I don't know, I wasn't there, I have a clue, I'm not into that. I'm just not into that shit, unless it gets thrown in my face, but I will definitely share it with all you from people that want to write in and share their uh, shitty experiences and come around like that, right? Anyway, I gotta get going. And uh, we're gonna have to all fly away tonight. And uh, I'll be back again in a day or something. We'll keep this, keep this ride rolling along. So, share my story at howtohunt.com, all right? Get your experiences emailed there. And, uh, Currently, ProGuys66 is the name of the Rumble channel that I have already previously created, but I think I'm going to do another one with the appropriate title, and then it'll be easy to uh, make that available to everyone as well. Just keep this, keep this ride of free speech and true, hard, nasty, crazy facts going, no matter what. I'll be back.